Hello everyone, it's Dmitry Anoshin and Interpolitics. This is uh, the Model 2, the first lesson, what is database? Don't forget to subscribe and like the video, leave the comment, because I think it's important for YouTube. I just noticed that I continue to publishing the videos, but people just couldn't find this. And I think it's really available information and it's for free. That's why I just need more attention to this. So thank you very much if you will like and leave the comment or share it just with friends. Oh, Ray's little friend come to me. Say hi. Yeah, say hi, hi. to the V. Okay, Michael, I will check later. Yeah, we we, we actually learning uh, the math, but okay. I'm doing the video, Michael, good? <laughs> okay, see you later, bye. We'll focus today on the databases. First of all, I paste here the definition of database from Wikipedia. And as you might know, those documentations from Wikipedia on from documentation overall, it, it's quite complicated. Sometimes it's hard to understand what is it. We can just read the database, a collection of data stored according to a data schema, manipulated according to the rules of data modeling tools. Another one, this collection of data organized according to a conceptual structure describing the characteristic of those data and the relations between them, which supports one or many application areas. So the key thing here that we use database for storing the data. And the database, they could be very different. What is actually a database is just essentially a system designed to store, manage, and retrieve the data. There are many different ways of database. As I mentioned in the introduction, that most of the cases for the data analytics, they focus on relational or analytical databases. Here I outline them. The relation database use tables to store data in SQL for querying, and the simple example, MySQL, Postgres, and SQL Server from Microsoft, or a Azure SQL Server in the cloud. We'll try to use them uh, during this model, and we're trying to install it on our machine, or use them in the Docker, or deploy in the cloud. So analytical databases or data warehouse, this is, could be exactly the same systems like MySQL, Postgres, SQL Server. If your data size is manageable, so you're totally fine to use them, but if your data is like, I don't know, terabytes of data, probably it would be hard to put it in MySQL and Postgres, and better to use the database that is specifically intended for this. For example, Redshift is example, could be Vertica or some other vendors. The NoSQL databases even Recently, we published the video on Serfolytics that answered the questions when we should use NoSQL database. Good news for the data roles, for data analysts, BI engineer, and data engineer, and list engineer, you usually don't need to work with those databases. You don't need to write to those databases. But sometimes you have to consume data from those databases. For NoSQL databases, for example, let's consider MongoDB, they, they have benefits. They're comfortable for use as a backend system or backend for, for mobile applications. If you want to retrieve this data to load in data warehouse and analyze with the SQL or BI tools, you probably need to know how to interact with them. And during the model two, we'll try to use uh, NoSQL database. Maybe we'll try to use MongoDB. Maybe we just deploy it in the, in the container, maybe install on machine, trying to load the data inside MongoDB and then extract. Then we will extract the data from MongoDB. It probably will be just JSON files, and you already know what's JSON. JSON is, could be semi structured data. Then we'll parse the data to be able to load data warehouse and query with the SQL. So there is also known like in memory databases. So they have very specific use case in object oriented databases. This could be also graph databases, and they could be considered as non SQL databases. So as I said, for analytics purpose, you only need to focus, at least right now, on the relation databases and analytical databases and the relation database for me just the same. I want to give you one example of NoSQL database from my past experience. I used to work with a subsidiary of Amazon, ABooks. See, this is my books, SAP Lumira or Jumpstart Snowflake. I wrote them in the past and they're available here to purchase. 
the website actually not storing database. As soon as I search something, the search engine will start scanning the database. In the past, it was relational database. We used Oracle. Then Amazon in 2016 mandated everyone to move from Oracle to AWS because it was one of the biggest implementations of Oracle in the world and it didn't perform well. There was the big project called Rolling Stone and all teams uh, and all product groups and Amazon migrating from Oracle. It doesn't matter, is it your data warehouse, is it your backend, anything, you're just migrating off Oracle to AWS. And then you do the migrations from Oracle or from any systems, you have the option. You can lift and shift. For example, you can use Oracle in the cloud if you had Oracle in the premise. Or you can actually do more sophisticated migrations. In this case, you can try to find what's the best solution for my workloads. DynamoDB, this the product was uh, invented and built in AWS, Amazon Web Services. Amazon is using it for own purpose. And then it's published this and make available through AWS. So this is the NoSQL database. It is database as a service. And we'll talk more about what does it mean as a service or infrastructure as a service and so on, those cloud service models. Then we'll talk more about what is cloud computing. I'm pretty good in cloud computing. I'm still teaching the cloud computing. Uh, I'm teaching for the last four years in the University of Victoria. I'm teaching cloud computing. I'm still trying to approach them to do some teaching for analytics or BI or data engineering, but they, they don't want. They just keep busy, keep me busy with cloud computing. Oh, that's fine. The DynamoDB is a great choice for myself as a person who work with the data and moving the data from source to target from DynamoDB NoSQL database to Redshift Data Warehouse. I just need to know how I can able to access this data and extract to be able to push into more ephemeral data store like Redshift analytical database. There are analysts can use the SQL to query the data, or maybe ETL tools can blend this data and connect with OLTP backend databases. If you don't know what those terms means, just uh, mark them, uh, write the comment with the questions, because now I create the dedicated video by answering your question. Just leave the comment. If you have something unclear, I will create a dedicated video to answer this question. So moving forward. The SQL database, I call it relation database. Eventually, it was proposed by Edward Codd in 1970s, something like this. Basically, it's the table, it means relations. And it says the schema to organize, and you know the, the tables, they, we can see the tables everywhere in our life. You, you did some assignments in university, you probably work with the tables. Everyone probably works with Microsoft Office or Google Sheets, you, you work with the tables. And it's great news because you, you have the knowledge of the tables, you have the knowledge of the, how the data organized in the tables, rows and columns, and you can manipulate the data. So this is all great news for you. And it means you just need to learn it better, how you can work with the same data but using structured query language. First, you need to put the data in the database and we'll learn how to put the data in the database and then how we can query the data. So this is what we can see. In this example, I have three tables. It's actually a replica of the same tables, but doesn't matter. The table, you see the columns, the rows, and the headers. Like header of the table is actually the column name of the table. Let's see what we have here. Assuming this is our table, table calls cities. Inside the table, we have columns, city, ship, mode, sales, and we also have the schema. So the schema, it's more to help us to organize the data. This is example of the column, and this is example of the row. This is just a very simple example of the table, and you can find those tables in any database. In terms of SQL, structure query language, some people saying not SQL, but SQL. So I don't know what's the, the right approach. It, it probably depends. What, what you like. Sometimes I say SQL, sometimes SQL, so I think both right. There are two types of structure query language. One is a data management language to write the query. And another one is data definition language, DDL. So there is actually more than uh, two. You can see there is also data query language, DQL, the select. There is also data control language, DCL. We'll talk more about them. In this model, uh, in the next lesson, we'll work on DQLs. DQL, data query language, is not actually that popular term. 
I didn't really meet it often, frequently. I probably never heard it. It's just people use the term query. I want to query the data. It means you want to write the select statement against some database, against some table, or maybe several tables. You need to join them, manipulate the data, and get the answer. This is probably what people expect you during the interview. As I said, in our Surfalytics, we're doing the SQL mock interviews there. You can just have the real world experience and you will try to solve the task with the notepad and the SQL. Let's move next. An example of database usage. In model one, we talk about online shop, Surfalytics, where we sell t-shirts. Let's imagine how it all works together. Assuming on the website, you're selling the t-shirt. It's not Surfalytics, uh, it's just a random picture. By the way, the Surfalytics uh, t-shirt shop is coming uh, with idea to give the students ability to use the real world data because I'm trying to spend some money on the marketing data, on the website usage, get the traffic on the website, get some sales, and this will give you the real insights. Then you can build the whole solution or just analyze the data like in real world. This is just a random example of t-shirt. We have the price, we have the sizes, we have the colors. And assuming you want to buy this t-shirt, you click add to the cart, you go to checkout, you fill the transactions, you pay. As soon as it's happening, there is happening a transaction. In transaction, it means all the information that collecting through the website, through the checkout process, it's storing in database. Usually those databases that serve as a backend uh, for the website, they call OLTP, Online Transactional Processing, because their primary purpose is process the transaction. And this is the purchase of t-shirt is actually the single transaction. And there could be many tables, not just one. There could be a table with orders, table with order items. There could be table customers, the table shipping, the table taxes. Right? So many tables could be in the can database. More or less for e-commerce, they, they are the same. And there are different uh, engines available and frameworks, for example, WooCommerce, that already you can just build your website or is uh, Shopify that you can build your online shop. It has the, the model ready for you to use. The idea that every transaction is happening, purchase happening, it means that this data locked in the database. And you can start to analyze this. And this is basically just was the very simple example of um, databases, real world example of transactions. I hope it is clear for you what kind of databases exist, what the top priority databases for you is relational with the SQL, and also you saw the example of transaction. The next lesson, lesson number two, we actually will start uh, learning the DQL, data query language, and we'll focus on the select statements. We'll set up the client for the database, because the next lesson is connection to the database. We'll stop the client. We'll use the, the popular open source product, dBeaver, that works for all operation systems, for all databases. We'll set up database locally. I will push the data in this database, and then we'll do some queries to see what, what the keywords there and what's the SQL. And also, of course, I will share lots of helpful resource on the SQL, there are different exercises like Hacker rank, lead code, where you can practice your SQL. If the SQL is not clear for you right now, if this concern is not clear for you right now, it's not the problem. You actually will learn everything as soon as you will start do some hands-on. In the next lesson, we actually will do the hands-on. Okay, see you everyone. Bye.